Tick tack. Tick tack. Tick tack. We are only 17 days away from FIFA 22 on early access, which is gonna be amazing. But today we're gonna take a look at some new gameplay that's been released. And uh, yeah, I don't even know what to say at the moment. Let's just get right into it. And by the way, the support in the last video was amazing. You seem to like the face cam as well. So let's go for 2,000 likes in this video. That would be amazing. I'm gonna keep improving this setup all the time, making the sound better, all of that stuff. Just, of course, uh, getting set up with it right now, so it is completely new to me, but hopefully, you know, it's getting better every single video. But uh, let's get right into it and have a look at this. By the way, take a look at it here of uh, Kevin De Bruyne. We can see this is, of course, the brand new, um, you know, hairstyles or the hair textures, I would say, on the FIFA 22 next gen. This is obviously on PlayStation 5, by the way. The PlayStation 4 or the old gen console is not going to be looking as good, obviously, as the next gen ones. But here we can see a brand new uh, haircut update there for... Uh, for De Bruyne, but uh, let's just take a look at this goal that happened. We can see Sterling there, finesse shot, and what is the keeper doing? And what's even more embarrassing here is that they try to cover this up. Uh, they try to cut to like a full face cam of a pro player, right? I mean, before even the goal has gone in, let's take a look at this one more time. We can see Raheem Sterling here, finesse shot, and as you can see, I don't know what that animation of the goalkeeper is. Now, obviously, this is probably just a very early build of the game, but uh, there's a brand new goalkeeper system this year in FIFA 22, and this is not looking the best, to be honest. I mean, the animations look good, but the fact that he could have just stood there still and probably just saved it, he didn't even have to dive with crazy like that, or I'm not even sure why he went for that type of save right there, that uh, goalkeeper. So, not off to a good start, but uh, we'll, give it a, we'll give it a pass. Let's see if anything else happens. Oh, I can see a celebration here a few minutes after. This is not long after. Kevin De Bruyne on the ball here. Cancelo now into Bruno Fernandes. Raheem Sterling from the same position almost. He's gonna pass it. And there, Bruno Fernandes. It's happened again. It's happened again, boys. And, uh... Yeah, that is twice two attempts right after each other. And why does the keeper pull off that same animation? Bruno Fernandes here pretty much from the exact same spot as Raheem Sterling was, and we can take a look at the outcome. You know, finesse shot, and it goes over the keeper for some reason. The keeper goes for like a save you would do if you got chipped or something like that. I don't know why it goes for that save uh, when the ball is pretty much straight at him. He doesn't even have to dive there, so this is not off to a good start. And uh, this is very worrying, of course, because of this brand new keeper system. And the fact that even though it's probably like an early build or something, probably like a demo version, um, this is still not a very good sign because, of course, they have added so many new animations. And if it's going to be like this... It is gonna be very annoying and once again, I don't know why they cut so quickly over um, to, you know, the full reaction there. So let me know what you guys think about these saves in the comment section down below. But this is something that I noticed from this gameplay. And uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of people complain about it. What even is that keeper animation? I really hope that it's gonna be fixed before the full game because, yeah, if, if the keepers are gonna be like that, it's not gonna be any fun. Look at that shot. Of course, not the best placement in the world. Literally straight in the middle of the goal. And the keeper just jumps and does nothing. So, yeah, very disappointing so far. Yeah, very worrying signs early into this game. The referee is about to blow for halftime here. And we're going to take a look at some of these new in-depth stats here. We can see a nice a little cutscene, of course. You can see the graphics of the next-gen consoles, which is looking great there. But, of course, here we have some more in-depth detail stats, which is a brand new feature. Uh, this year, you can, of course, see expected goals. So you can go through every single player and have a look at really in-depth stats about how they have performed. Um, but this is just, you know, a pretty safe, simple and basic right here. Possession shots, expected goals. This is pretty cool though. He's got two goals there, but the expected goals is 0.1. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he shouldn't even have a goal to be honest. So, that is uh, pretty interesting uh, to see that. Of course, uh, Tex here with zero goals, but he has got higher expected goals. So, this is a nice, interesting stat that is gonna make you mad at times. I can uh, call that right now. But, uh, yeah, you know, nice to see all these um, in depth uh, things here. Let's move over to some more gameplay. Mohamed Salah here linking up with Son, nice uh, fake shot there, and that is uh, a nice save from the keeper, finally we have a proper save, and the corner has uh, been taken, and uh, now we have a counter attack here off a text, Salah with a nice through ball here, into Kylian Mbappe, surely this is gonna be a goal, what is the keeper doing there, I think he was manually controlling the goalkeeper, because... 
I do not understand why it didn't come off his line. Um, looked a bit weird, but uh, yeah, I think he manually controlled him. So, of course, that is a nice and easy goal there. And uh, here we can see the uh, ultimate team card design as well. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty interesting. We can take a look at Mbappe here if we go a little bit further back. Uh, there we have the celebration as well with Mohamed Salah in the background. Brand new face update for Mohamed Salah or at least hairstyle updates. Kylian Mbappe as well, of course, uh, looking pretty realistic as well on next-gen consoles. This, <laughs> this is just funny to me because I don't understand why they actually showed off uh, this gameplay when, you know, obviously they know that a lot of people are gonna be complaining about it. Maybe, you know, they uh, didn't uh, play it again because obviously they know that a lot of people are gonna be talking about how actually, uh, you know, the, the how broken the game actually looks already. So it's, it is just fun that they just went for this gameplay, uh, even though, of course, there was some really bad moments there with the keepers and everything like that. So they didn't retake it. Uh, it is it is just how it is, I suppose. But the comments as well are pretty hilarious. A lot of bad feedback here. We can also take a look at the likes, a lot of dislikes there. So, of course, not everybody's happy about it. To be honest, I'm not really that happy about it either. Pretty disappointing, not gonna lie. But this is obviously Ultimate Team gameplay, so a lot of things can happen in Ultimate Team. Of course, offline gameplay is gonna be much slower uh, than what we've just seen right now. But once again, my biggest concern, the goalkeepers do not look good whatsoever. I like this commentary, this looks nothing like football. The high promotion was to lie, the players still move like FIFA 21. This is something that they focused a lot about, the hyper motion technology, brand new game breaking, you know, everything like that for next gen consoles. But to be honest, once again, as this comment said, I didn't really see that much of a big difference from FIFA 21 to FIFA 22 here. All I can see is that, of course, there's some more detail in the grass and stuff. That is obviously how it's gonna be for next and Some of the player faces as well look more realistic and there's more detail around the stadium. But, I mean, that doesn't really matter. The gameplay is the most important thing. And if, of course, it's still old bad gameplay, then the game is not gonna be fun to play whatsoever. So, um, yeah, to be honest, not a very big fan of this early FIFA 21 game, uh, FIFA 22 gameplay. Um, so a lot of people do indeed agree with me on that one. So yeah, pretty disappointing. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But um, yeah, in my opinion, they could have at least recorded this again with maybe a couple of at least decent goals. <laughs> Look at this one as well. EA dropped this with Comfy SCS. What did they even expect when they actually released it? I, I, I don't understand what they expected. Did they expect people to uh, be excited about this gameplay? I, I don't understand, but um, yeah, weird decision, but maybe it was like tactical by EA, release bad gameplay, get a lot of people to start talking about it, bad PR is still, you know, PR, so I don't know what they're thinking, but I agree with this one, why did EA post this, I mean... It could have been saved this one in the drafts. Come on. We're gonna be moving over to some more FIFA 22 gameplay. This is now 2v2 as well. I believe this might also be an ultimate team. Uh, but here is actually Marcy off through on goal. And uh, that gets blocked. We'll have a look at this corner. And something that I noticed. What are these two players here doing? Look at the animation here. I think that is Lewandowski. And uh, I'm not too sure who the defender is. But take a look. What are they doing? I don't understand. Are they trying to break... An invisible wall or something. I, I don't understand what is going on there. Um, so some of the animations obviously are not looking like they should. A lot of bugs and stuff. But once again EA are releasing the gameplay. They do not care about that. Um, they probably just want people to start uh, talking about it. And Mbappe here with a nice ball. Uh, a bit over hit there. But they still got it. And um, yeah nothing came out of that one. But in my opinion the gameplay looks very fast. And to be honest when it's so fast. It, it is unrealistic, but of course the most important thing is that it is enjoyable to play. As I said once again, though, this is ultimate team gameplay, so it's obviously going to be much faster than offline gameplay. But my biggest concern here is that EA released a couple of, you know, high-rated cards early on. And if you have those cards, it's going to be, you know, simple to, uh, to win games if the other opponent doesn't have as fast players. That is pretty much how ultimate team has been, though. Uh, for like the last 10 years. Now we can take a look at the first goal in this game which came after uh, yeah over 80 minutes and uh, we can see here uh, that it's gonna be Team Hullet on the attack. Uh, here we have a, a nice long pass there and uh, what is going on with that animation? I think that was Sergio Ramos awful animation there. Let's take a look at that once again. What was going on there and why are they releasing this gameplay? This one as well. Lots of dislikes. Uh, but this is horrible. 
Sergio Ramos it is and it looked like he glitched through the ground or something and then Mbappe scores and once again they cut to yeah a new screen before it's even um, been shown uh, the full goal so yeah I, I don't even know there's a lot of you know bad things about this gameplay here we also have some other gameplay I just wanted to show you guys quickly and for some reason every single time there's a free kick uh, the player is blurred out now this is surely probably just like a bug or something but how many bugs do we need this is once again not not the best sign in the world uh, but as you can see here the player is blurred out and that is pretty much what happens until he has taken the free kick I don't understand why probably a bug maybe it's something new in the game I don't know but uh, yeah doesn't look uh, you know that good when it's blurred out like this but this is how the free kicks are gonna be looking like in FIFA 22 so far this is also something that I noticed I'm gonna show you guys this a clip and uh, you know the commentator he actually said that oh my god this is such a nice you know new animation looking super realistic and stuff but of course they are on a massive paycheck um, so they are not going to be saying any negatives about this gameplay uh, but let's take a look at this one look at this switch of play here it's new and looks terribly unrealistic the spin the speed was OP and the way it was kicked looks rushed and cringe so let's have a look at this right now. You can see this throw in comes here over to uh, Alaba, I think, and look at that switch of play right there. I mean, that is not realistic whatsoever. If the, you know what they've said this year is that they go for like these new realistic animations and stuff, but that looked completely unrealistic. Let's take a look at it once again without stopping it. Just take a look at that. It's completely unrealistic pass. The way he moved there, the way he shot the ball completely uh, you know looks just weird to be honest I don't understand uh, why the commentators say of course I do understand why I say and look at that I mean what is this guys come on EA what is that why did he go for a header in that situation De Bruyne flicks it up and just a diving header I mean, I don't know what to say, guys. I'm gonna leave it there for this time. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about it. I was actually going through this and actually trying to find a couple of, uh, you know, things that I would like to show off. You know, maybe a nice goal or something. But there is no nice goals in this gameplay that EA have released. So this is what I'm gonna have to show you guys today. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. But that is it for this time. Drop a like in the video. And I'll see you soon again with another one. Peace out.